In this tutorial, we'll take a look at previewing and publishing our courses in Storyline 360. Now, we'll begin with previewing since it's really the, the one you'll probably use the most while you're developing your course. It's a great way to see the changes you make as you're building your course without having to publish it. And with Storyline 360, previewing is even easier and more powerful than ever. You can now preview how your course will look and behave on any device and orientation with Storyline 360's new responsive preview options. So let's take a look at how all this works. All right, so we're starting out in Story View, and it really doesn't matter whether we're in Story View or Slide View. Uh, so I'm just going to drill down into a slide. So the options are going to be the same. You have the options right up here to preview the current slide, the scene, or the entire project. And again, Preview really makes sense just to check your, your progress, check your course, verify things are working as you are moving through development. Publish is really more of a, uh, let's see how the whole thing works together. Now, one reason you'd have to publish your projects was to test your project in a variety of devices. Well, not in Storyline 360. You see these little gear icons right here? Well, we can click any one of these and quickly preview how our screen or slide's going to look in each of these different devices and orientations. So right now we're in, we're in a classic desktop mode. Well, let's see what it looks like in a tablet landscape. Okay, so we can get an idea of how our slide is going to look in a landscape tablet mode. Now, the really cool thing that's going on here is the new responsive player in Storyline 360. You see how it's been optimized now so that the player is really getting out of the way. The player is really getting out of the way and we're maximizing the screen real estate for our slide content. And we can preview our, our slide, in this case the slide is all we're previewing, across different devices and orientations. So here's a tablet portrait. And even though the player, right, has gotten out of the way and it's down here in the bottom, well, I still have a lot of space around here. So maybe this portrait mode, you know, really isn't our best bet for this landscape type slide. So let's taste, test it in a phone landscape. And that's looking really good, right? The player looks great over there. I've got a lot of slide uh, filling up this, the device. And then finally, we'll check the phone portrait mode. And this one doesn't look as good. So what's really cool, besides this player that's getting out of the way, is that we're not just limited to previewing our course or slides in these different devices. We can now control how learners hold their mobile devices as they view the courses. So we can set responsive playback restrictions. So let's say that we built this course, right? And it's really meant to be in landscape. I mean, when you look at it, you compare this view, say, to this view, it's clear that this is more of a landscape type course. Well, I don't want my learners to have a subpar experience, right? By having to, by holding the device in a certain orientation that really limits or, or restricts what they can see. Instead, I can come up here and click this gear icon and watch this. Well, right now, by default, we're allowing the tablets and phones to display the content in landscape and portrait. Well, let's say I want to do it. I just want learners to view my content in a landscape mode. So I'll select that. And let's do the same for phones as well. So better. Now click OK. Now we're in a landscape mode, but let's see what happens if we try to view it now or our learners try to view it in a portrait mode. So when learners try to view our course now in a portrait mode, they're going to see this little message this little alert saying hey please rotate your device and put it in landscape mode obviously the desktop is going to be the same this is what our our default is and there's of course the uh, regular menu and if we look at it on a phone landscape there it is or if we try to do it on a phone portrait they'll see the uh, rotate message so this is a really fantastic way to just ensure that learners get the best experience with your courses now when we publish the course when we publish this out, this is what's going to happen, right? So if we set this property here in our project, so whether we, you know, what we're allowing, either everything or just landscape or portrait, this is going to carry over to our publish settings. So let's take a look at that real quick. So just come up here to publish. And of course, Articulate 360 now is part of uh, the publish option. So if you want to publish and share your courses on 360 and maybe get review, you can do that. So one option right here, just, uh, just to point this out, is that if you want to create a new item, go ahead and give it a name. But the publish options here will actually look at and, ref and recognize all of the published courses you have. So this is my Comstar course, but oh, well, maybe I really want to overwrite another course because I just want to update it and I've got a lot of new content. I can actually publish a new version of an existing project. So that's a really helpful 
option there for just if nothing else version control as well as keeping your content fresh now on the properties here's some new options here we can publish directly just solely as HTML5 or we can set as a HTML5 with a flash backup flash with HTML5 so you actually have a lot of ways to ensure that you know different learners or different uh, audiences are going to get the content that's best for them so this is a really great option and then we have our mobile player options as well I, I, by default, I would always keep these selected unless there's a reason you don't want your learners to uh, download your content for offline viewing. This just helps ensure your learners get the richest experience uh, with your content. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then we have a few options here that I'll point out under uh, the web settings. And that's first off the title and description for your project. You can also control where you're on your local drive. These are being published. Now, if I click this More button up here under Title, it's a really great way to personalize your course. Now, the description, right, could be taken from that other field, but then you also have some keywords that can be used for searching, your author, contact info, and um, if you have a website address that you want to share. The, also, the other thing is this, this thumbnail can be a really powerful way uh, to share your projects, especially if you are uh, distributing a lot of your projects on the Articulate mobile player. So this thumbnail is being pulled from the first slide of your course. Well, in this case, it's pretty meaningful, right? I can recognize that and, and know what project that's from. But let's say you have a bunch of maybe solid filled shapes that are fading in on your slide, you know, just as like a, a way to kind of fade into the content. You might see a thumbnail that's just a big solid color and it's not really that helpful. If you want to swap this thumbnail out, you can, well, first off, you can either choose a different slide from your course to make that the, uh, the start screen right so that works or you can just simply choose a picture from file to represent your course so maybe you have like a custom thumbnail uh, that you want to use so you can just go grab the uh, the image and use that the only tip I'd offer here is just to use the same aspect ratio so if this is a 4 by 3 uh, 720 by 540 I would make sure that whatever picture from file I use is also uh, that same aspect ratio click OK and you see we have the same format options that we had for Articulate 360. You choose your player. What kind of player do you want to use if you're using the built-in player, maybe a custom player. For quality, you know, you have the standard quality. You have customized. You can customize the video. We do a really good job with video quality compression. So I'd say just uh, try knocking this down a few um, levels and still test your video and see if it isn't uh, a, a lot smaller file size. But uh, the quality should be uh, relatively high. Great option, new in 360, Storyline 360, is the optimized audio volume. So what this is going to do is it's going to go through every slide in your project, and it's going to look for uh, the different audio levels and try to uh, level those out, even those audio levels out. Fantastic option if you're doing a lot of recording into a Storyline. So you're doing a slide-by-slide. -slide. Maybe your office environment or your recording environment changes from one slide to the next. Just a great way to ensure that the levels are are more even than they would be. Now, if you already have really fantastic audio and your levels are already uh, been set, maybe because you have a, uh, a, a studio or you're having someone record those, I would deselect this just so it doesn't take up as much time when you publish because it's going to have to analyze every slide and every piece of audio. So if you already know your audio is in good shape, don't worry about this. But if you are maybe doing different recording at different days or different times, absolutely use this option. This is going to be a big help to ensure that your audio sounds uh, consistent. Go ahead and click OK. And then finally, we, we looked at some preview options for uh, different ways that we can preview a slide or a scene. Well, these now made them made their way over to the publish options. So here's our default, right? You can publish the entire project, which is how uh, it used to be. But now we can publish a scene, right? We can just uh, publish one scene. And we don't have to worry about maybe disabling things from the menu. Just say, you know what, scene one is the one I'm going to go with. I might have eight other scenes, but that's the scene I want to share, and that's all that's going to get published. And the same thing for a single slide. Maybe you're making some, some interactions in your course that you want to share outside of the course or outside of the LMS. This is a fantastic option for uh, quickly publishing a slide uh, by itself without having to save the project and then delete slides or you know make a scene and just make that the starting scene. This is the way I would go uh, forward. And that's just choose a slide. That's what you want to publish, interactive graphic. Click OK, and then that's what's going to be published. And let's just go ahead and publish to web real quick, just so we can look at the uh, dialog window that pops up. So I'm going to publish everything. 
All right, view projects, probably the one you're going to use the most. That just launches your published course in your default web browser. Now, this gives you a pretty, because you're viewing it locally off your hard drive, it gives you a pretty good idea of how it's going to work online, but uh, there are some differences between viewing your course locally off your hard drive and viewing it off of a web server. So really for the best testing, you're going to want to upload this to a, uh, a web server. You can email the published output of your course. Uh, it, depending on the size of your project, that might be a little bit uh, large for someone's inbox, but it certainly is an option if you uh, wanted to email the course. FTP is just a way that you can enter your FTP credentials and then transfer your output directly to a web server. The zip option just creates a zipped version of your course files and it puts it in the same location where your uh, course was published. So if you're trying to make a backup copy or you wanted to uh, maybe send the files to uh, someone else to review or upload to their server, you know, that's an option right there. And then finally, open is just a way you can view the folder contents of your published course. So if I look at this, I can see that I published obviously to HTML5 because I have a few extra files. Here's the story file, which is the main file, right? And then I have my, my assets and supporting content. Now, if I wanted to upload this project to a web server, I'm going to need to keep everything in this folder, right? This published folder together. So I can name the folder, the parent folder, anything I want. But these files right here need to all be together. And that's what you would transfer up to your web server. Go ahead and close it. And that's just a big picture overview of previewing and publishing your courses in Storyline 360. Obviously, there's a lot of options when you start working with LMS and other types of uh, uh, servers. So if you have any question at all, please post in the forums. We'll be more than glad to help you out, maybe create an additional screencast to uh, walk you through the process using your own uh, server or environment.